Hey everyone, welcome in. Um, welcome back. I know it's been two months since I've made a, a Teppan deck video. Um, honestly, I burnt myself out for a little bit. I played probably, like in the first two weeks of the expansion before this, I played probably 400 games in two weeks and was completely burnt on the game and completely burnt on the meta. So I decided to change my playing style um, and go towards a more budget-friendly type build less legendaries in the deck, um, trying to have more fun, again, finding new synergies, and that's when I came up with an idea to start making budget decks for the videos. Um, I was burnt out on showing things that everybody plays. Um, I wanted to, and again, this is still stuff everybody's going to play, but this is more budgetary versions of it. Um, they are legendary caps on my decks. Now, I don't use more than five. Um, unless I'm playing what I call an optimized deck, like I do on a ladder sometimes, um, like my current ladder deck I think has seven legendaries in it, which is still very high for me. Um, but when I say legendary cap, like I'm capping myself off at three, four, or five legendaries in a deck. Um, so, and we also got Defy the Light, which is the new expansion which brought in Unleash. Um, so that's why all these decks have some sort of unleash in it. Um, I'm trying to use a lot of the new cards. I'm trying to keep it in a good budgetary reasons. Um, so as you see, Jill slash Nina is probably the most expensive. Um, so this is the first deck. Um, it's probably the most expensive. It has a little bit more epics. Um, it has more legendaries. I think I'm only running four in here, but still more than the other decks. Um. Uh, but yeah, I'm running a lot of epics in this deck because it's it's hard to get Jill to run um, without with a lot of the commons and rares because they don't have the power that you you would like in a red deck. Um, but this is our way to try to build around it. So let's take a look. Brought to Light is an old basic card, and it when used on one friendly unit with Explorer, they use their Explorer. This works uh, really well on Nina because she would do two explorers. She would explore for Joel and Millionaire. Um, instead of with the other explore cards, the other explore actions, the fourth unit to explore, it only does a random on Nina, where Brought to Light does both. I run two Joel, um, deal four split damage amongst all enemy units. That's like a shield breaker. Um, I don't use it to destroy a unit outright. I try to use it to either initiate some sort of response from them and then break shields or break shields field wide one legendary unit here or a card here is no time to waste and explore for shotgun which deals nine damage um, spread amongst enemy units or if you have your deck has 15 or less you get rocket launcher and give it minus two so eight to one enemy unit and then four to adjacent units so again shield breakers damage takers let's just do it um, three castle on the run. Give a friendly unit plus two HP and your sh hero shield. Again, it helps your hero survive a little bit. Enemy un um, friendly or a friendly unit gets plus two HP, and at memory seven they get an additional plus one plus one. You use that to make tanks at the end of the game. Um, a three or three Moria's uh, Moria when played she explores for shield, and when a unit explores she gets plus one HP. Three. Gahalakas, which um, they explore for Hidden Knife. For those of you who don't remember what Hidden Knife does, Hidden Knife gives plus two attack and on death and the ability on death do three damage to the enemy unit in front. So they become a bomb. They're basically become a ticking time bomb. I run three in, or two incinerator traps um, with a lot of enemy or a lot of decks now relying on death abilities or something like faith um, deal five damage split amongst enemy units and if any unit is destroyed by it they're removed from the game which would hurt something like let's say Ouroboros or um, even a, a bringer deck or a faith based deck it just basically removes from the game and their death abilities do not trigger which is awesome I run two will not miss you can run this at three and take out maybe one of the brought to lights um, deal three damage to one enemy unit and if your explore count is three or higher deal an initial six so the three breaks the shield and the six is the big damage again um, Nina is one of the other legendaries and she has veil and quest 
Um, so when the enemy he hero or a enemy unit takes three or more damage at the first time, she gains plus one plus one. The second time, she explores for Jolt and then gives all action cards in the EX pocket minus one. And the third time, she gains plus one plus one again. And she explores for Melanir, which is basically a shotgun, but then give it minus two. Um, so that would make it a two cost. It would just basically make it shotgun. Um, which is nice. I only won one Yang. He's like a game closer with agility. When placed on the field, if your explore count is three or higher, gain plus one, plus three, and R charge two. So he becomes a three seven with agility, and you can AA him. I run three Enigma. They're the replacement for Claire um, with anti air. And when placed on the field, if your explore count is four or higher, deal four damage to the unit in front. So not only do they survive longer, they only cost one more. <laughs> and they do two less damage, but they're able to chip and break shields and exchange, and that's what AA is all about, is winning exchanges. Um, I run two Harus, um, and he has shield, and he explores for option C, which gives a unit flight and deals three random damage. Um, and at Unleash 10, he gains agility. So, again, Unleash, when you hit a certain HP threshold... Um, so when your HP hits 10, Unleash then activates. And so he would become Agility. He explores for option C. So you can give him Agility with Flight for one attack, etc. Or you can just use him to roll with AA. Run um, the other Unleash unit is Charlie. And he has Combo. And while on the field, effect damage taken is minus 2. And his Unleash threshold is 15. And he will gain plus 1, plus 1, equal to the number of cards in your EX pocket. I run one Momo. When on the f she's another quest unit. When on the field, give all friendly units plus one attack. So she helps buff things up. Um, and that procs her quest ability for the most part. And at level two, she gives a random friendly unit plus three HP, which is nice. At level three, she explores for Quake, which is sacrifice three life. And you destroy all enemies with four less HP. And that and give it minus two. So it's basically a two cost to destroy all enemy units with minus f or four less HP. And then at level four, she gains uh, or she gives all friendly units plus two HP. Then I run Golden Queen Altica. Um, she's the new legendary unit in this deck. When played, if your explore count is three or higher, gain plus one plus three, which is very nice. She's a three nine out of the pocket at a five cost. On attacking, send one castle on the run from your EX pocket to the graveyard, then deal five damage to one random enemy unit. And you ask, how are you going to get that castle on the run in the EX pocket? Well, after taking damage and surviving, you explore for castle on the run. So it'll go to your EX pocket and give it minus one. So it basically burns the card to do a five damage on a random enemy unit on the field, which is nice because you're going to be getting, she's going to be getting hit, but she's also going to be dealing damage back. And of course you run FDR. Um, for those that are new to the game, Ref DR has Rush and Agility, and on attacking he does X damage to the number of units in front, or to the unit in front, equal to the number of actions used. So he's basically, you can have him hitting for 16, 17, 18 in front, and then doing his 3 damage on the field. Very, very nice. But yeah, as you can see, it's more budgetary than most Jill decks are going to find. Um, actually, most red decks are going to find run a lot of legendary units, but that's this one. Um, let's take a look at a game, shall we? Okay, so as you can see, I'm going to do all my games in points match because I feel if a deck is can win in unlimited, it could win anywhere. Um, also, I am trying to prove a point to somebody <laughs> in ranked, so I am trying to only play one deck in ranked right now. But, so we're going to see a yawn, which means we're going to have a stupidly annoying deck. Um, but here, I could have dropped Agatol there, or Altica there, and to get my explorers going with her, but I decide I'm going to try to go the Nina route. So here, we're just trying to rotate through. Get some explorers off, and so here, trying to give Nina flight, and also do some damage. And then I got a little greedy here, and so I'm going to lose my Nina <laughs> um, to the Chun-Li, where if I would have aid aid um, Nina and said she'd still be alive. But I got a little greedy. 
um, and just use to save Moria. But as you can see, they're going to start cycling through for the HP. And they're going to use Spell Severance to try to get a free unit on the field. And I say, no sir, I'm going to use Incinerator Trap and remove both of them. I just got a lucky spread. Um, so they seal Heru. And they're like, let's go X. And here's where um, I Won't Miss comes in. They put the shield on, the three pops it, and then the six damage goes through to remove it. I just tried to drop um, Alkata there. Um, I could have saved her and used her for after Haru was eliminated, um, but I just wasn't 100% sure. And then, so I decided, and they decided they're going to seal it anyways, but it's still a 3 9, which is fine. And here's where Enigma comes in, and but I don't use it. I decide to chip it out with Galaka and then create some time bombs, as you can say. But I know probably right at that moment that Karin is coming out, and that's where see where Enigma comes in, and they could trade, and they're a lot more survival related than um, than Claire used to be. And he decides to overplay his actions, and so I'm just going to remove the Karin. I decided to keep Enigma on field because nice is a five six um, with shield. And a time bomb. Um, but he gives me an option to start exploring again to get some stuff in my pocket to get ready for that Charlie. So now if I have to drop Charlie, he's gonna come out with um, he'll be his unleashed will be able to be unlocked, but it doesn't look like I'm gonna hit that threshold anyways. But in case I also have Yang, and in case they remove any units, I basically have my backup, so I'm not trying to play any actions here to give them a chance. And that's game. All right, so let's go take a look at the next budget deck. All right, let's take a look at an Oichi deck. Let me go back here. So I, it's a Dancing Dead deck. That's why I'm calling it Dance of Defiance, um, because it is using Defy the Light cards based with off some cards we've got in the last couple sets. Um, and it's an HP-based destroy deck. Um, I'm trying not to use hard destroys. I have two in the deck, but... That's it, and I'm trying to use a combination of um, faith and HP removal units um, and actions, and then a little bit of um, unleash on top of that. Two selfish predations, destroy one friendly black unit and give your hero four life. Um, again, destroying your own units is pretty kind of how this deck wants to work too. You wanna to buff up your units using faith and you also buff things up like Solo's ability, um, Cowardly Betrayal's ability, stuff like that. Um, two Red of Initiation, give one random unit with faith in your graveyard, minus one MP, and return it to your EX pocket. Again, to cycle, we want our units to die over and over. Um, excuse me, two Land of Light, place one random unit with an MP cost of three or less and faith in faith from your graveyard onto your field. Well, we have a lot of those, so they'll recycle through. A new card, um, we get an obsession. This is a really, really good card. Um, send one random action in your hand or EX pocket to the graveyard and deal damage double the amount of MP sent to the graveyard um, by this effect to one random enemy unit. So you can use it one to chip if you pull some. If you pull something, you can use it to chip, or you can hit something big if you if it takes like Titanic Gatekeeper or Last Judgment. It's gonna hit for ten and fourteen, which is still nice. If it takes the other actions, it hits for 8, 6, 4, and 2, which you don't really want it to hit for 2, but that's the risk you take sometimes. Um, I run 2 April, and she's a human with faith, and she's a 2 5. Again, faith. We want units to buff each other, and we want units to keep coming back. Um, Birdie, he's a human, faith, and when placed on the field, if there's another friendly human unit, he gains plus one plus two, so he'd come out at a two seven if he doesn't have any faith buffs, which is still fine. Um, three Satsuki, she's agility and faith. We use her to chip at the beginning of the game, or you let her sit in hand and get super buff. I recommend just using her to chip and use Land of Light to bring her back. Um, so that's my thing, but you can play it the other way. 
Um, another new card, Divine Beast of Judgment. Give one enemy unit minus three HP, then give the unit in front plus three. Um, we don't really care about the secondary ability. Um, it is helpful if it's like a boss unit, but if it's not a boss unit and it's just something else that you know you want to die anyways, and you can even play it on a unit to not get the buff, but to just minus three HP, that could remove a low HP unit, um, or it could chip them enough to hit another threshold for another card. I run two Kenji, he's a, from the last set, um, from Breath of Resistance. He's a human, and when placed on the field, gain plus one HP for each unit in the graveyard, a maximum of eight. So if you have a ton of units in the graveyard end game, he comes out at a four nine, and he's a good um, late game closer if, it hap if you so need it. I run him at two. Um, I'm pro you could probably run solo ZN2 at three and take out... Um, like another Satsuki or something because this card is really really good. I run him at two though. Um, I find it consistency to get the faith buffs and procs. Um, I find it better the uh, this way. Um, he has flight and his unleash. He's one of the two unleash units in this deck and his threshold is 15. When unleash 15 happens, he deals damage to one random enemy unit equal to the number of times friendly units have died in battle, and that's a maximum of seven. Um, so he can just hit something for seven. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And do some good ch um, chip damage or outright take out the smaller um, but stronger units. Cowardly Betrayal. Destroy one enemy unit with HP less than or equal to the number of times from the units have died in this battle. So if you keep recycling those faith units, you can get this card up to ridiculous numbers. I've had it hit um, 12 HP. Um, so it could destroy anything with 12 HP or less. Again, does it give him a chance to counter with a, an HP gaining card? Yes, but when you have something at 12, it's a lot harder. Or you have something at like 8 to 10, it's a lot harder to save a unit that way. Um, so I use it that. Again, HP base destroys. This spot, you can use the new Oichi card in its spot, but I use the Nero for her ability. She has faith, and when a friend, random friendly, or when a friendly human unit dies, um, give plus, or give one random enemy unit minus three HP. Again, you're chipping, 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 and then you can use Cowardly Betrayal. You can use Divine Beast to just straight up remove the cards. Um, the next is the big green killer in Titanic Gate. Gatekeeper, and I say it's a killer, but it's not really a killer. Um, it's just a good counter. Destroy ran one random enemy unit with a cost of five eight, eight, um, five MP or more. It's the one um, non-legendary hard destroy I run in this deck. Um, I run it at one. It's good to remove gators. It's good to remove stuff like FDR from, or um, some of the bigger like Dante, some of the bigger purple units that come out. It's good to remove those. Another HP based destroy is Gallop Tachibana. He has faith and when placed on the field, destroy the unit in front if it has five or less HP. Really nice to um, just remove something once you've been chipping it. And I run three legendaries. This is the first one, Faithful Shadow to Copra. And her she's a human and agility crush and faith. And on attacking, she gains minus two HP, but then she deals three damage to one random enemy unit or hero. So she can break shields, she can damage the hero, she could be super buffed by um, all the faith units if you get her early game. And yeah, she could also be buffed by this card. This is the other hard destroy one in run in Last Judgment. Destroy one enemy unit, then give one random friendly unit HP and attack equal to the attack, HP and attack of the unit that was destroyed. Against Big Green, this is a killer because you're going to destroy that unit and then you're going to give your unit the buffs that that unit had from being big green. It's really, really good. Um, imagine giving that to Takavre, um, or even a Satsuki or a Kenji or even a solo with flight getting big buffs. It's super awesome. Um, and the last card is the new legendary goddess of ruin Miria. Um, she has spillover and anti-air. So you kind of want to, I like to drop her in the middle lane, but I, you could also drop her wherever those flight units are coming in from and if, either way you're going to get some big payoff um, when played place up to two random black units with an mp cost of four or less from your graveyard onto the field then give those units faith um, that's awesome especially if you're pulling two solos because then that's 14 damage on board um, but you know 
in this deck you're gonna pull something more faith units means more buffs for faith units in hand etc um, but on death she's removed from the game also, hers unleashed is at 10, and she explores for two light of destructions and gives them minus three HP or MP. Light of destruction itself is a four cost, and it inflicts minus six HP on one enemy unit. So basically, you're getting a six HP removal unit or removal card for one MP when you drop Miria. So really good. I really like her. Um, there's been even times I've dropped her with just one unit in the graveyard that's going to come out just because I didn't have a chance if I didn't and I've ended up pulling out because of it. So let's go take a look at a game. Okay, this game is against Kokosho. Um, and the way green works now, we don't know what type of deck this is going to be. It could be big green, it could be coordination, it could be machines, it could be um, tribal. So right now it looked like machines, but then I see them drop the coordination unit. So I know it's a coordination deck, so I know I got to get on my horse. But they drop that Chun-Li, which is going to be problems for me. Especially once I give her, a she gets the um, combo. So I decide I'm going to sit for a little bit on this and let her hit my thresholds um if i can get to my myria threshold she can pretty much make the comeback happen and there's me using tachibana and then i use dancing dead to get a little bit of hp back so now i'm looking in pretty decent shape and then here's where you can use beast you can use it see they had no response they went for a little greedy play which they should have waited for an action response first but now i'm just saving up for miria if i need her and i know she's not going to proc her final ability i know that or i know she's not going to get two units back she's only going to get one but she's going to give me those two dying lights and that's what i wanted as you can see i'm just going to remove and if they, there were options to remove other things and that's that so you see um, that's this game so let's check out the last deck okay so this last deck is going to be a tribal based deck I call it Trinity version 3 because um, for those of you that don't know Trinity was a type of deck that came out with feline and there was a card called the Trinity which gave um, a huge buff to every unit on the field based on the number of tribes that were on friendly unit tribes were on the field um, that deck kind of died and went away it came back um, during the island of fear set and it went away again and now it's come back again in this version here after the whole trilogy which is kind of fitting that a trilogy brought trinity back um, but you all know everybody knows i'm a chun li main and i've played kinkosho since day one of the game so of course i'm going to do a kinkosho deck um again this is all tribal based so green has a lot of synergy between having different tribes on the field or a number of different tribes and this deck really emphasizes that so sanctuary's gate it's a legendary um all friendly units gain plus one hp for each friendly unit on the field which is a nice three th three hp buff if you need it and again looking at the legendary count we have three in this deck um we do have about 10 epics um that you will need to pay for or grind or craft um two of the epics or basics that you would get from feline so again it's a little bit pricier than the um oichi deck but it's not as pricey as the jill deck stairs of light is the next card it's a new card and it gives one friendly unit plus one hp but if there are three different tribes on the field of monks friendly units against you get an additional plus one plus one and they proc at separate times which will come into play later so for plus for one mp you get a plus one plus two on a unit which is really nice to cycle some cards back into the deck we have the new card silent guardian which returns up to three random cards from your graveyard to your deck which is very nice um inside an action chain to get things back in your deck get back units that have been destroyed get back actions that you could always use in disarms and stuff like that which is really really nice speaking of disarms you run two disarms which inflicts seal on an enemy unit 
another new card is Incidental Implement. Um, deal damage equal to the number of different tribes amongst friendly units on the board, plus two to one enemy unit. So this can technically do up to eight damage if you have three different dual tribe units on the field. Um, I've gotten it to seven because I've had five different tribes plus two, and you also deal two damage to your hero, which is not a problem. In this deck, you're going to get HP back with the Yasu or with um, Legend Eater and um, Mia. Plus, you also want to hit your Unleash Threshold, so that kind of helps you get there. Uh, just two basic felines um, MP boost 20 when played. If there are two different tribes on the field, you gain shield. You can play any feline here. Um, it will work. I just like the basic one for some reason. I just like him. Um, two of the new Liasu. He's a human, and attacking deal one damage to um, deal damage to one random enemy unit equal to the number of different tribes on the field. So you can have it hitting a uh, random unit for six when he attacks. And at unleash fifteen. He gains plus two and agility, which is really really nice. Um, he's really fast and then does spread damage. The new Nero. He's a human and a demon. And he has anti-air. His unleash threshold is really high at 20. And he gains plus one, plus one for each different tribe amongst friendly units. So, and that includes himself. So he could go up to a 6-9 um, if possible. But the most I've gotten him is a 7-8. Which is still really, really good. Um, I run three Mia. She's a human and a spirit. And she has MP boost 30. But when she ascends, she gains... She her ability is randomly distribute 10 HP between friendly units in your hero's life. One, keeping you alive. Two, keeping your units alive. Or three, both. Um, the next unit is Bale. He's a demon and he has Rush. When played, if your hero's life is 20 or higher, gain plus one, plus three. So he's a good intro to the game. He's a good starter. He's He pokes early and he the, he becomes... he You basically have to deal with him early um, and waste... Um, resources to get rid of a 3-8 on board or if he got a buff from a Rico he's a 310. Um, Rico is a new unit um, she has shield and MP boost 30 when played give one unit card with an MP cost of 4 less in your hand or E it's pocket plus 2 HP so you make your unit survive longer this is a really good card I don't care what anybody says this is a great card um, if you use this along with the new with the coordination Chun Li, she comes out at a three four um, without even ascending. Um, so it's just ridiculous. You can get Nero out at um, a, what is it a seven eleven. You can get Yasu out as a one seven. Mia at a three five. Bale as a three ten. Um, so it's just ridiculous. Legend Eater is a new action. Um, give plus four attack to one friendly unit effective for one attack only but you also gain the ability decimate gain plus one plus two and give your hero plus two life again you're going to get life back and then your unit's going to get buff in the process so really good card um in my other more my, in my non-budget decks i run it at one but here i run it at two the MVP of this deck is Revival Guardian, Gar. He's a human and a creature, and he has shield, and he cannot attack or block. And you're like, oh man, that seems really bad. Why? Well, when he hits Unleash 10, he was meditating for a while, and he's just pondering the situation. And when that HP hits 10, when your hero's HP hits 10, he gains plus 1, plus 4, agility, anti-air, battle damage taken by this unit, and your hero, minus 1. Wow, that sounds really good. He's a 5-9 with agility and anti-air, and he takes less damage and you take less damage, but he doesn't attack. But he doesn't attack. Oh, but he loses. This unit cannot attack or block. So he becomes a he becomes a 5-9 with agility, anti-air, like, and he takes less damage. Like, it's ridiculous. Um, and then combined with buffs, he's just going to run the field. And he has. Um, here's the Trinity card. So this is based on how many tribes are on friendly tribes are on the field. Um, if if automatically it gives all friendly units five HP, but um, the following are more. If there's two or more tribes, they also get one attack. If there's three or more tribes, they get five HP, one attack, and revenge plus two plus two. And if there's four or more units on the field, all your units become un or four or more tribes on the field, all your units become unblockable. It's very easy to proc in this deck. You can get easily if you have Rico, Nero, and Mia on the field. 
oops, or Rico, Nero, Mia, Gar, Shakuna, Honda, like it's just, it's just going to add up. You're going to have more than four tribes on the field. You're most likely going to be unblockable a lot. Um, Shakuna and Kushala Deora, they're human and a monster, and they have flight and quest, um, and the quest is to gain HP. At level 2, she gives all friendly units, including herself, plus one attack, and at level 3, she sends an enemy unit with five or less HP back into the deck. Um, that will double proc with Stairs of Light, because they get, she gives one, MP, or one HP first, so she'll get her plus one. And then she'll get the plus one plus one, which gives her another HP, which will then send a unit back to the deck. It's a really nice little combo inside an action chain to remove a unit. The last card is Honda Tadakatsu, and he's a human and a machine, and he has a flight and shield, which is really good to start out, especially with all these flight units. And the best part is when an enemy unit dies, he gets plus one HP, so he can stay on the field even longer. Um, so yeah, that is a more budgetary build of a tribal deck that you can play in ranked in um unlimited in points match in exgps in gps and it'll still be very good it's is it going to be as good as if you spend a ton on legendaries no it's not going to be as good but it's still going to be competable and you're still going to do well with it um so that's that these are the decks let's go take a look at the tribal game shall we all right, so this game is against Bringer of Nightmares. Um, especially Unlimited, this can be a very disgusting deck to play against. I don't like this opening hand. I have nothing I can really do, so I cycle out. And as you can see, I gain some tribal units, plus Rico, and see how she buffs Nero to a 1-5. So now Nero can come out a lot buffer than he would usually. And I drew a bail, so I can start chipping. And I see he's running our good old friend Nemesis. Um, sorry, I should have sped that up. As you can see, I chip with Bale, and I don't mind that he's just going to take out Rico with Nemesis. I'm not even going to care about him. He has slow, um, and I have the MP to back up if he plays some crazy play, like he does here. So the big Nemi comes out, and I'm literally waiting for him to hit my threshold. Um, and he does, and so I drop both Neros, and I shield up. And remember, Liasu's ability is still going off on top. So he's doing um, two damage on the field because I only have two different tribes on the field with the human and the demon. So as you can see, I'm just cycling through now and doing damage with Liasu. And it's just taken off. Uh, this is three, three MP units on the field. I decided to take a risk here and go for the Legend Eater just to make Liasu last a little longer. And as you can see, I destroyed a unit, I got my Decimate ability, I'm back in my threshold. And that's it. It's a quick game. So yeah, thank you guys for coming out to my video. I know it's been a while, um, but let me get back to my menu here. Um, I know it's been a while. Um, I have two toddlers, so I'm not sleeping very often right now, and I'm also trying to find time to come up with some new content that's not what everybody else is playing, but like I said, a lot of people are playing these decks, but I'm trying to make more budgetary versions, more um, beginner-friendly versions of these decks that are still strong enough to compete in the meta. Um, also, I'm, I'm playing a lot of Master Duel. I love Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel came out, so I'm trying to balance my time between Teppin and Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, so I'm going to try to keep up on a weekly schedule of a Teppin deck every Wednesday, or a Teppin video every Wednesday, and a Yu-Gi-Oh! video every Thursday. Um, we'll see how that goes. It might not always work out the way, or I should say a Teppin video every Tuesday, and a um, Yu-Gi-Oh! video every Wednesday or Thursday. Sorry, I misquoted. I thought it was Tuesday. Um, I'm recording this on Monday. <laughs> but yeah, there's that. So if you guys like this, like, subscribe, leave me some comments. Um, if you're new to my channel, I post a lot of Teppin stuff. I'm going to be posting a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff going forward too. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to try to balance two videos a week. Um, and I'm going to try to get back to a more consistent streaming schedule between um, all of this, 
Um, I will be streaming Teppan again soon, and I do stream, I am going to stream Master Duel and some random JRPG or random horror game. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for more guys. I will be back next Tuesday with another video. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I gotta come up with a build. And hopefully my kids sleep so I can use my time at night to record videos and make new content. Um, thank you guys so much. I hope you guys have a good day, and I'll catch you later.